My full name is Michael Joseph Lazarus and I was born on the 12th of September 1934. I grew up in a tenement block which had been built by the 4% Industrial Dwellings Company which you may or may not know was a project of the Rothschild family. Um, the uh, Rothschilds and uh, some of their acquaintances uh, decided to build blocks of flats, um, Brady Street buildings being one of them, um, Nathaniel buildings in Spitterfields being another, um, um, Evelyn Court, the one I lived in, being another. Um, um, to house what were uh, known, well, what they described as the Jewish working poor. And if you were Jewish and working and poor, you could um, rent a flat in these buildings. Um, at, uh, in, in our case, at uh, the rent of 16 and 9 pence a week. Um, yes, uh, um, we were poor, everyone was poor, but you, never, you didn't know you were poor because, uh, uh, because that was the world you were growing up in and there was nothing to, in those days, to actually compare it with. So as children we just grew up in, in these blocks of flats. Lots and lots of, of children, which was wonderful. Always someone to play with, always activity in the playgrounds. Um, and um, I look back on it as a um, extraordinarily um, fruitful time. Um, very, a very happy childhood. It was interrupted by the by the war. It was interrupted by evac evacuation. Um, but for the periods of time, the, the years that we lived in the buildings, um, I was um, a happy child. I've always said, always said that uh, growing up in these blocks of flats was the best thing that could happen to a child. It's just lively, always there was activity all the time. There was a huge sense of neighbourliness um, and yeah, it was good. Well, my mother was a housewife. She had uh, four four sons, um, and, my, and my father um, worked in. He was a tailor in the garment industry. And my mother came from uh, Warsaw, um, and, um, and she had no other family in uh, Britain. My father. Um, came from the from Lithuania but with his father mother and at that time um, some siblings I can't remember which ones were born in the country and which ones were not but there originally there were nine um, two two of which died he was he served in the first world war and um, when he came out of the army um, he went into tailoring and, um, and that's what he was in for the rest of his working life. I was evacuated when I was five. So um, that, and we returned to London in 1942 because all sorts of difficulties. We were, my brothers and I were all uh, evacuated to the same village in Cornwall. There were all sorts of, uh, of problems and in the end we all came home. So we were home by uh, the middle of 1942. Um, and there were no schools when we came back because all the schools, um, the children had gone to the countryside and all the teachers had gone with them. So they had to set up um, emergency schools for children who returned. Um, and um, that was okay. Um, it, um, I was relatively um, content um, and then in 1943 we had the incident with the bomb. The bomb fell and every, everything around us fell in and, um, 
um, we went. We, we always sat in the passageway of the of the of the flat because there were no windows because blast was such a was so dangerous. Um, and um, I, I remember uh, 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 calling da uh, to my father, "Daddy, save me! Daddy, save me!" I was sure we were going to die. Um, and um, in the event, none of us died. Um, and but the following morning, I had a stammer that made school life very, very difficult. Um, simply because nobody took any notice. Um, you had a, a disability. You had a disability. That was it. You lived with it. There were there were no there were no treatments available. There were no psychologists waiting to help you out. So you just got on with it. Um, and that just made school life very difficult. Some of the kids mocked me when I tried to speak. So it, it had a huge effect on my self-confidence. Um, and I'd been a really happy child and, um, and that uh, began to um, deteriorate after you know, at the age of 11. And um, particularly because then I went to secondary school and that was really difficult. Um, I didn't pass any exams. Um, I have a twin brother, by the way, who died um, eight years ago. He went to grammar school, um, but I, there was never any chance that I would go to a grammar school. I didn't take any exams at school. I left as the moment I could um, and um, went to a body called the Sabbath Observance because I came from a family that uh, kept the Sabbath. And um, and they said, well, would you? What would you like to do? And I was particularly good at woodwork. In fact, I was very good at woodwork at school. Um, and so I, they put me into this apprenticeship. And um, and I, you know, that was it. Until I joined the Brady Boys Club, and then everything changed. It was the first time since I developed the stammer uh, that I found any understanding of the difficulty. Uh, and um, I just found it a place where you could, A, be yourself, very energetic, lively, active, extraordinary um, atmosphere in the club. The club was managed by um, um, mainly men who came from wealthy Jewish families, educated men from wealthy Jewish families, what we used to call the West End, West End Jews, because uh, it's distinct from East End Jews. Um, and um, I, 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 th I thought, I found them to be quite extraordinary, e easygoing, um, able to talk to us and us able to talk to them. Um, and uh, one day I was sitting in the canteen and a man called Peter Perry, who was one of the managers of the club, came and sat next to me, started to talk to me. And um, he told me that he um, ran the discussion group in the, in the club and would I like to join it? And I explained to him, well, he could see for himself that I, uh, that I didn't really speak terribly well, that I stammered and I would find it difficult to um, manage in a discussion group with um, a group of boys who could speak fluently express themselves articulately and I was unable to do that and he said no no don't worry about that They're, they'll understand I understand and you can um, please come and try let's see how we get on um, um, and I did and I just found the atmosphere so conducive um, that I began to re to regain my self confidence, and as I regained my self confidence, I regained my ability to speak. Um, and in fact, um, I became, I think, very, 
very good at it. So much so that when I was, I think it was probably 17, yeah, about 17, um, a, um, a producer from the BBC came to the club. They were planning a new uh, programme for under-20s. It was called Under-20 Parade. And it was due to be broadcast after Dick, Dick Barton um, in the... I uh, can't remember how many times a week, but, um, but um, quite often. Um, and they were looking for young people to present um, this programme. And they came and listen, he came and listened to the discussion group and he chose six boys from the, from the group and asked us to, uh, to come to an audition at the BBC. And on the due date, we, we all went together to Broadcasting House in Portland Place and we were ushered into a conference room a big table in the um, middle of the room and on one side of the table were sitting six boys in school uniform and we were introduced to them as six boys from Harrow Public School. So we had this juxtaposition of six boys from, from uh, the Brady Boys Club in East in Whitechapel and six boys from, from Harrow. And we were given a subject to talk about. One side had to defend a, a proposition and the other side had to support the proposition. Um, and ex extraordinarily, it was no contest. Um, and after a relatively short while, the um, producer told the boys from Harrow that they could go home. And we were left with the six boys from Brady. And we continued to discuss um, other things. And then he said, well, um, um, I'll give some thought to this and I'll let you know. Um, just, I'm looking just for two. Um, and he eventually chose two, and I was one of those two boys. So I had done a complete turnaround from being inarticulate to being um, really rather better than that. There was a very high level of discipline, but it was not discipline that was enforced. It was discipline that that arose from the ethos of the club and the atmosphere in the club. Um, I, I always look back on, on, on Brady and wondered how it was that a large number of, of, of boys in, in one building at the same time, night after night after night, and there was literally no violence. And I've always thought that to be quite extraordinary, but I think it was, um, it was about what the ethos of the club was. The club stood for something, it meant something, and I think Yogi gave it that sense of purpose, and it had a lot to do with Yogi, in my view, being German, being a refugee, and, and like myself, I came from a family that had terrible losses during uh, the war. Um, and I think Yogi was determined that we would not be cowed by that, but that we would be the best we could be. And that, in a, in, 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 in a boys' club, meant you were going to be the best at football and you were going to be the best at cricket and you were going to be the, and and so on and uh, you were going to be best at drama and you were, and it was a it was a club that was absolutely imbued with that sense of purpose that you have you are going to be the best 
as a kind of, I've always seen, looked back on it and seen it in this way, as a, a way of saying we have not been beaten.